Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions on this Monday morning. No, Friday morning. Where am I? What day is it? Oh, Lent is coming and I'm just all sorts of flustered. That's just how it is at this time of year. Things are starting to get busy again, um, as if they ever weren't busy. Do we ever have a day that's not busy? I mean, that's just kind of how life is. It's constantly busy. We're, human beings are good at, be, at, at, at being busy, being busy. I don't know if we actually ever accomplish anything. And it causes a whole lot of anxiety. You know, the Lord says, don't be anxious about anything because he'll take care of everything for us. He provides us the air we breathe and the food we eat and, and through our vocations and um, there's really no reason for us to be busy all the time. We need to take time and contemplate the Lord, which is, I guess, what we do here. So that's a good thing. Um, yeah, yeah. So good morning. Friday, February 17th. Man, halfway through February. Uh, next, this Sunday, uh, for many that use the three-year lectionary, the transfiguration of our Lord, those in the one-year lectionary, I think it's Quin, Quingesima, Quin, Quincogesima, something like that. Um, and uh, next third, next Wednesday already is Ash Wednesday. Lent is almost here. Whatever will we do with Lent being almost here? Well, anyway, good morning. Let's see who's joining us this day. Uh, oh, by the way, Sunny here in north the north woods today bright i i thought it was overcast when i got up this morning apparently i was just up before the sun was um the weather service is saying 10 degrees right now so sunny and crisp outside jerry good morning uh snow covered where you are huh all right that's all right you guys must have gotten the snow that went south of us but that would put it right over you guys there's bonnie chiming in she says 13 on our thermometers here in the in the parsonage. Uh, Mushtaq, good evening. Kathy, good morning on this winter day. Yeah, Verna, good morning. Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you. Renee, good morning. Uh, school, oh, schools are closed. Oh, icy roads, okay. Well, that's okay. I don't know if you've had a snow day yet this year. Um, down in southern Wisconsin yesterday, I guess it was pretty bad. Even some of the colleges were closed, so that says something. Uh, and Deb and Grant, good morning to you. And Glenn, good morning. Glad all of you are here with us. I'm going to refresh once here just to make sure I got everybody. Uh, oh, no, I got more now. Mike and Karen, good morning to you guys. Uh, Bird Sanctuary of the Country. <laughs> well, right now it kind of is, you know. I mean, it's warmer down there. Of course, we've got our birds up here, too that hang out throughout the winter. Brave things that they are. John and Jill, good morning to you guys. There's Connie and Robin. Good morning there in Harsha. I'm going to refresh one more time just because uh, things keep popping up here. Okay, it looks like Connie and Robin are the last. Anyone else who's watching, good morning to you as well. Glad you're here with us. And if you're watching on uh, Facebook later today or YouTube later today, Good morning, God's blessings. Hey, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. All right, there, I did all that stuff. All right, um, let's get down to the business at hand here this morning as we begin. Uh, if you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, I have my treasury of daily prayer right here. Oh, that's the morning order of daily prayer. For individuals and families i have again i have my treasury right here as we uh as we begin so um by the way as we're going through this stuff my updates aren't popping up the, my comments aren't popping up the way they should but i try to check at the end and if you if you know if something hits you and you have a question or something to add um, feel free to do that and if nothing else i'll catch it at the end um, and i do look at the comments afterwards to make sure uh, and if you're watching post or after this or, or whatever, if you're watching on YouTube, um, those comments I get also. So if you have questions, feel free to ask. 
All right, down to business. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm, push the button, Psalm 37, verses 25 through 29, Psalm 37 today. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. He is, excuse me, he is ever lending generously and his children become a blessing. Turn away from evil and do good, so shall you dwell forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I have been young and, and now am old. Many of us can say that, and some find more years than others. That's wisdom, right? To be young and now to be old. Um, but what the psalmist is saying is even as he ages, he's never seen God's righteous be forsaken. God does not forget his people, and he continues to care for them. He, he feeds them and clothes them and gives them shelter according to their need and through their vocation. My glasses are dirty, and I forgot to clean them before you guys got here. Um, the children, never seen his children begging for bread. They don't go hungry. You know, even in, even in difficult times, the Lord provides for those who are faithful to him who trust in him to do so. Um, yeah, it's kind of like the loaves and the fishes. Uh, even, even if there's just a little bit there, there's always enough. It's like a Lutheran church potluck, right? Well, I don't know if there'll be enough food here, Pastor. Um, how much do you want to take home with you? Um, the, 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 the righteous is ever lending generously. His children become a blessing. The children seek to to serve the family and, and the church and the, and the neighbors. So turn away from evil and do good, right? And, and good is not what we think is good. And, and justice that the Lord loves is not our justice. It's what God deems as good, that's good. And, and that is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind, et cetera, et cetera. And your neighbor is yourself. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. God establishes the righteous. All right, let's go on to our Old Testament reading here from Job chapter 13 now. We're just going to the next chapter, 1 through 12. And he's, as I said yesterday, Job's continuing uh, from where we left off yesterday. Um, he was talking about uh, the Lord pouring contempt on on many and... and um, being in control of things. So let's let's move on with this. Job 13, starting at verse 1. Behold, my eye has seen all this. My ear has understood it. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you, but I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to argue my case with God. As for you, you whitewash with lies. Worthless physicians are you all. Oh, that you would keep silent, and it would be your wisdom. Hear now my argument, and listen to the pleadings of my lips. Will you speak falsely for God, and speak deceit deceitfully for him? Will you show partiality toward him? Will you plead the case for God? Will it be well with you when he searches you out? Or can you deceive him as one deceives a man? He will surely rebuke you. If in secret you show partiality, will not his majesty terrify you and the dread of him fall upon you? 
Your maxims are proverbs of ashes. Your defenses are defenses of clay. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> I, I have been young and now I'm old, and yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. We had in the psalm, and then and then uh, Job says, "My behold, my eye has seen all this, my ear has heard and understood." Uh, it's, it's wisdom. We're talking. It's really this is wisdom stuff going on here. Um, and yesterday, yesterday in uh, chapter twelve, verse. Uh, Three, Job had said, but I have understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you. And today in verse two, what you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you. Job knows the world as well as his three friends do who are accusing him. Um, and he knows that difficult times have fallen upon him and that many say that the that, that difficulty, struggles, persecution... Um, fall upon uh, fall upon uh, the wicked, but God blesses the good. And that's kind of the, the even in Jesus' time, that's kind of the mindset of the first century Jew that if something is if something is wrong with somebody or with their family or something like that, it's their own fault. It's it's some sin that they did and God is punishing them. Um, the the blind man, the blind Young young man who God who's blind that God that Christ gives sight to, um, they go looking for the parents and they say what are we, you know and the, and those around say why is this man blind what what did his parents do oh, it's nothing. Job knows that all the things that they do but he understands I am not inferior to you, he understands that God. The the punishment is not falling upon him because he is wicked or that he has done wrong. The punishment, this is not punishment, but this is testing. His faith is being tested, uh, just as ours is sometimes tested when we come in difficult times. And Job says, I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to argue my case with God. The faithful wish to speak to God. They wish to say to the Lord, why? It's not that the Lord has to give an answer, but at least he hears the plea. He listens to the complaint, to the, to the, to the lament. But, but his three friends, he says, you whitewash with lies. You, you make light of this situation. You pass over it saying, you've done something wrong. When I haven't. Job hasn't done anything wrong. They lie about what he is doing. <laughs> Worthless physicians are you all. You, you come to be uh, aid to him, and yet you force him to become more ill. You feed him with the poison, thinking that he should, uh, he should, he should uh, uh, deny God the authority uh, to test him, and to assume that it's just punishment, that it's as simple as that. As for you, you whitewash with lies, worthless physicians are you all. Oh, that you would keep silent. Shut up. Quit, quit telling me that I have done something wrong when I stand before the Lord blameless, when I am in Christ. Oh, that you would keep silent, and, and silence would be your wisdom. Now, there's, there's truth in that, right? I mean, what's the old adage? Um, a uh, man opens his mouth to show his foolishness. The foolish speak. Uh-oh, I'm the one speaking. Well, anyway. Here's my argument. Here now my argument. Listen to the pleadings of my lips. Right? Uh, will you try to deceive God? Would you would you would you would you tell God that that he is he is a punitive God? Uh, will you lie about him? Will you will you say, well, uh, you know, God, you, you're you're, uh, you know, what is this? Will you show partiality toward Him? Will you plead the case for God? Would you would you sit here as my friends, but would you argue against me with God, or would you argue against God for me? Would you speak speak to God of my blamelessness, of my uprightness, or would you 
say to God, look, he, he, he's a sinner. He's terrible. He's awful. Or can you deceive him as one deceives a man? He will, he will surely rebuke you in secret if you show partiality. Will you not be? And I'm not. I, I'm, now, I'm, now I'm struggling here a little bit, guys. So bear with me a minute as I think through this. Um, they've accused Job of having done something wrong, um, and they're they're showing partiality to God and against Job. They're not loving Job as their neighbor, right? Um, they're not seeking to forgive Job or to offer forgiveness. They're commanding him to repent and to despair and to have sorrow when he's done nothing wrong. We know he's done nothing wrong. Remember, we began with God saying to Satan, have you seen my servant Job? He is good and upright. So we know that God loves Job, and we know that Job is pleasant in God's sight. But these men are saying he's not. These men are saying that he's awful. Your maxim are proverbs of ash, and your defenses are defenses of clay. What you speak will not stand before God. It will be burnt up and torn down. Because Job is not placing his trust in the friends who are telling him what he has done. He's placing his confidence in God. He's trusting in God who's testing him. And he's trusting God that the testing that he is undergoing is for his own good, for his own benefit. That by it, God will build him up and strengthen him. That's what testing is for. God doesn't tempt us. Remember that. God tempts no one. And yet, and yet, we are tested. We do have, sometimes nearly every day of our life, a test that God puts to us to see if we are faithful. Little, little things sometimes, stubbing your toe, slipping on ice, <laughs> not sleeping well. These are little tests. Sometimes they're big tests. Illness, disease, death. The loss of loved ones. But God tests us because he knows that by testing our faith, when we turn to him, when we turn to Christ for forgiveness in life, we are stronger for it. Isn't that the old adage as well? If it doesn't kill you, it'll make you stronger. God sends those things upon us, which could kill us. But through faith in Christ, he gives us not only an escape, but the strength to endure. And when we're done, we are even stronger in Christ. That's what testing is for. <laughs> I, have, I have been young and now I'm old, and I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Uh, let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus, as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments, that we may be nourished unto life everlasting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we will, after I have a little sip of something here, we will continue with the uh, yeah with the Apostles Creed hey John good morning to you and Janet if she's nearby you're down in Texas all right awesome awesome I'm glad you're down there it's warm the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, oh, prayer for ourselves and others on this Friday morning. Gracious Lord and adorable Savior, this morning I praise you who redeemed me through your sacrifice on Calvary, purchasing me to be your own. Grant that I may serve you with a willing heart and untiring devotion to show my appreciation of your great love for me. Make me an instrument of consecrated service to you and let all I do today bring glory to your holy name. Help me by your grace and through strength coming from you to resist every temptation to sin. Do not let me deny your name or ever be ashamed of you. Enrich today with a genuine Christian joy and a sincere appreciation of your goodness and your peace, which fills the heart and mind through faith in your redeeming cross. Whenever an encouraging word is needed, let me give it. Whenever a helping hand is needed to lift a burden, make mine ready. Guide my footsteps in ways that are pleasing to you. May my whole day be dedicated to you, my Savior and Shepherd. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon those who suffer, whether it be body, mind, or soul, Especially this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Ann, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Hear their prayers for the sake of your Son, who calls them brothers and sisters. This we ask in his holy name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotions for this Friday. It's Friday. Friday. February 17th to a close. God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. And it, it, it will be Saturday, Pastor, uh, uh, for a little time in God's Word. God's peace be with you.